Hey there, my name is Travis and this is the seventh video in a series called Parallax on the Web. And today we're going to be making these things. These are little blog posts that fly in from both directions and land in their place. But unlike the other landing elements we did in this series, these ones are different in that they're completely controlled by the user's scroll speed. Remember that you can go to github.com slash devtips and get all of this code organized by video for free. Now I usually wait till the end of the videos to thank my patrons, but I wanted to make an exception for this video because it is being dedicated entirely to the people who are suffering from the earthquake in Nepal. 100% of the money that this video raises will go to disaster relief efforts there. And if you can help and you think it's worth it, I recommend that you uh, donate what you can. So to my patrons, thank you. Your donations are going to an even better cause than dev tips this week. All right, let's get into it. Okay, we're gonna start by replicating this kind of pattern here by just grabbing that content really at the top of our uh, markup in the index.jade file copy and then go down here to where we left off below the large window and um, out dent, out dent, and make a pasty paste. Command V to paste, a pasty paste. And there we are, clothing store, another one, another section title of clothing store. I think it should be different, right? We should spend some time to name these things. So the first thing is called clothing store. How about not clothing store at the top? Let's just call it, let's talk about attributes. Uh, un unique style. Yeah. And then after that, we have uh, unique style, clothing store. There could be like fine, fine tailoring. And then the one we just made down here, not clothing store. Mm, let's have a section where we talk about like the history of the company. So we'll say like rich history. Now it's a little bit more. Now it's a little less uh, generic. Rich history. Cool. And another thing we could do to make it less generic is like change the page title. Come on, guys. What are we doing here? Uh, we'll call it uh, Black Bird CO. Thank you. Okay, cool. Now let's get to business. Rich history. What are you doing, buddy? Well, first let's go to the Periscope and add some bottom, uh, add some padding to the bottom of it because that is too much. Too much. Uh, promo text, large window, margin top, margin. Bottom, 100, 1,000 <laughs> pixels. All right, that's better. Now, rich history. So now I want to add some, you know, just some variety to this homepage. And you know, let's say that our clothing company blogs, right? Because if you don't blog, if you're a clothing company, then you're not doing it right. So, uh, so let's add a section here called a blog posts and this needs to be a row with our you know using our skeleton grid here and uh, each post is going to be uh, columns four so four columns wide means that there's going to be three of them on a row and this first one will just be called post dash one now in the post each post is going to have a, a you know a post title post title silly bear uh, and an image now I've sourced some images out already uh, here this one is going to be in the images folder posts and it's going to be a one dot JPEG I think and then below that we'll ha we need to have like a little bit of a you know a little bit of a blurb so I'll just say lorem right oops Lorem will give me some lorem. And then below that, I want to have um, an anchor tag. So I'll have a, an anchor and I'll call it class button, which is a, um, which is a boots, not bootstrap, what is this? A skeleton thing. Uh, button href href equals doesn't matter. And we want it to be like a read more button, basically. 
read more. Okay, there needs to be three of these. That's what we said earlier. Okay, let's look at them. Okay, so we got these post titles and everything looks great here except for there's way too much text in these in these posts, which is fine, which is fine. I just cut some out. Great. So here's the here here's the posts. Um, let's change this up here. This is going to be two and post two, post three, post three. There you go. They look a little bit different now. Okay, we're done with the markup section. Let's go over to the styles. In the styles, let's go down to the bottom and create a new section called posts. Okay, so the container of the section is called blog posts, and uh, it's it's going to be really simple. So we'll just we'll just say oh well, and it needs a margin top. of, what is it, 100 pixels for all of them? Let's move those posts down, okay. So, inside of the blog posts is a post, and let's put a border on them. One pixel, solid, um, and then we'll make the color like really light. There you go. Looks nice, and let's put some padding on them. Uh, 20 pixels padding. That's good except for the bottom doesn't need 20 pixels so we'll put 20 pixels on the right and the left and then zero on the bottom. That's good. But now this one text is too much. Let's cut off this word here. There we go. Okay that's what we wanted just three three cute little boxes. And now what I want to do is, is have these boxes kind of like be controlled by the scroll and kind of move into position based on how far the user has scrolled. So let's start it off with with how they how I want them to start, right? So I want post dash one to be um, actually so I want post dash one to be transform translate uh, one hundred pixels and. 20 pixels. Okay, uh, we need to make the background of these posts white so they don't look like they're invisible on top of each other. Background white. Okay, and then I also want to do the same with um, number three. But I want to put it the other way, so it'll be negative 100, not positive 100. So they all move in and then when we scroll up they'll kind of like blossom, they'll kind of move out. And wah, wah, wah. But post number two needs to have a Z index of you know something more than one. And in order for the Z index to work they need to be position relative. Okay, that makes more sense. Cool. Let's go into our functions and go down to the bottom of our scroll function. And we'll get this same logic up here for, you know, we did the last time. If the scroll is greater than large window, so we'll take that, copy it, but this time it's a little bit different. It's if the scroll is greater than uh, what we call a blog, posts, that container of the blog posts. Then do this stuff. Make a jQuery object of posts1. And again, we'll do that same style of CSS. But this time we're going to be doing that, uh, this, this right here, transform translate. Transform I like the singles better. Translate. 
uh, CSS transform translate. Okay, so let's work out our offset. The offset needs to be negative 100 pixels needs to be negative. Um, we'll, we'll make a variable called offset. Var offset. Now the offset is equal to our active element, which is the W scroll, minus the uh, offset top of the container. Okay, and then we'll do plus the window height again. Same formula. Oh, it should be um, pixels right here. Oh, did you say that? <laughs> it's flying in towards the bottom. Okay, so right now the, the final position of this thing happens when you know the window is, is right here. So we want to move this up. So we'll say minus offset top uh, window height minus like 200. Now we should see it happen right there at minus 200. See that? Boom shakalaka. Let's look at its position. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So what we have right now is the reverse of what we want. <laughs> it's like starting where we want it and then flying off, which is weird and not good. Um, that's because it's negative right there. Now it's going to fly off to the right. But the problem remains that it's flying past as I scroll up. It's going, it's continuing on. So what we need to do is we need to put a minimum number that you know this can, can scroll to. So we'll say offset math min open paren zero uh, comma and now inside of that we'll put this little formula and then we'll close the paren. And what that says is that it won't let offset be larger than zero. So it'll float in and then stop right there. Let's increase this number so we can see more of this animation. Cool. I'm a fan of that. We'll do it for post two as well. <laughs> they look silly. Uh, we want we need it for, to be actually for post three. That's the one we wanted. Uh, but we don't want post three to come in off the from the left. We want it to come in from the right. So, so what we want to do on post three is take this offset and again throw some math on it. This time we'll use abs, which is absolute. So instead of being negative, we'll make it positive. So it'll be coming in from the right and meeting in the center. Boop. We should have some sound effects. Kind of like epic. Um, now let's raise them up a little bit as well. And we'll do the same thing as right here. Uh, translate, plus, 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 all that stuff right there. So remove 20 picks and put math absolute offset. Now it will fly in. Did I mess up something right there? Oh, I need to add pixels. That's what it was. Great. Now it'll come up to an angle, but it'll end uh, exactly horizontal at the top. It's coming at too sharp an angle. It's like a 40 degree angle. It's just linear. Uh, we can offset that by like multiplying this. Like let's say multiply by uh, 0 0.5. And now it'll no longer be 45 degrees, but more of like a so whatever degrees that is. That's nice. 0 0.2. Okay, I want that same thing for this other one. So 
So 20 pixels gets replaced with this, which is pixels. That looks good. OK, and they all float up to meet it in the middle. Looks good. I like this one. A uh, little bloggy post there. As you're scrolling up, they fly into view. And, and I, like it. I, like, I really like things that are controlled by the user's scroll instead of just triggered like these ones up here before, because these, these will never be as exciting as they were that one moment. And if you miss them, they're gone. But these ones here, like the, uh, the, the promo scope and these blog posts flying into view, it's a lot more fun, I think, for the user. It's fun for me, anyway. And I hope it was fun for you, too. This video, of course, would not be possible without my patrons. These people have gone to patreon.com slash devtips and pledged a dollar amount of their own choosing. They get videos early and sometimes I even help them pick out what to wear for an upcoming interview. Again, 100% of the money that this video raises will be sent to disaster relief efforts for those suffering from the earthquake in Nepal. All right, that's it for this week. We have another Parallax video coming up next week. And until then, keep on hacking.